Hey everybody, welcome back to the unwrapping part of our tutorial. One of the first things that we want to make sure is that we have text tools installed. We definitely gonna need it. We already had a look at it in the 3 Max introduction video. For the case that you haven't seen it, you can always just download text tools if you punch it into Google. And it's really simple and straightforward. It's just dragging it into the viewport, the installer file, and that will give you text tools. For now, we still have a few modifiers on top of our geometry here, such as the symmetry in most cases. And in order to collapse all that, we are going to select everything, 57 objects in total, and we are then going to slide over to our modifier list and add the editable poly on top of everything. So now we can switch over here to the face mode, Control A or draw a selection. And first of all, we want to give everything one material ID here. So now that we have everything here selected and as one material ID, we just have to collapse that edit poly modifier, right click and collapse two will do that for us. You could also say collapse all, it doesn't really matter. Let's confirm that here. And now we are left with only our editable poly geometry without any modifiers. Let's take our selection, bring up the material editor. And now we can just take any of these material spheres here, go over to maps, diffuse color, and let's add a bitmap. And in that case, we want to have the checker pattern texture that you will find in the essentials folder. Let's double click it. And now we have that thing loaded into our material. Let's make sure we have that little button check there. And now we can just assign everything here to our selection. So again, make sure you have that button check there. And now with assign to, we have this texture applied here to our low poly geometry. And then we are going to work our way from the back to the front. First of all, let's take it into isolation mode here. And let's talk about a few unwrapping strategies on it. Since this is all one wooden piece, there wouldn't be any sense in unwrapping that uniquely so that this side here and that side would have one continuous unwrap. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to unwrap one side only and then later we're just going to copy it over here to that side. And if you wonder which side is it going to be that we're unwrapping, the answer lies here in our high poly folder where earlier we already put a few details here on the right side of the stock. And we didn't put it here on purpose on the left side because um, that was already taken into account and I was planning on just unwrapping that side here. So what that means is that we're going to first of all close the scene explorer and then in front perspective and face mode we can then just make a selection of basically everything here on that side of the stock. And the reason for that is that this selection here are the faces that we're going to detach because everything here we're going to copy over later. And for now, we just want to make sure that we really only have the geometry that we want to be working with or unwrapping. And that also means that I'm going to deselect the faces here that we already know we want to keep unique. So I'm going to do that here. Let's also unwrap that here, of course, this piece as one. And everything else right now, we are safe to detach, not as a clone. We just want to detach it here. And I'm going to also give it a different material just so that we see visually that this is the stuff that we have to add back later. For now, we're just going to leave it like this here. We can isolate that again. And this is the actual geometry that we're going to unwrap now. 
So I just reverted all my unwrap settings back to default so that we're all on the same page while we reconfigure it so that we have the ideal working conditions. First of all, unwrap UVW, I have both the shortcut as well as a button here assigned to it. So let's click it. And the first thing we mention is that in order for it to prevent having to click this button here again, for it to come up, we're going under options and tell it to always bring up the edit window. Let's click it. Let's also get rid of this checker pattern. It's only in the way and makes things uh, not as clear when we unwrap. So I'm going to disable it here. The next thing is that shortcuts will only work here in the edit UVW window when we have the keyboard shortcut override toggle on. So let me click it and let's start with some unwrapping here. Here with one, two and three on the keyboard, we have a few shortcuts already assigned to for these different modes that we will be working in. Um, for now, I'm just here in the polygon mode and I'm selecting everything and flatten map it. And let's just have a quick look here at some things that we're gonna be doing. Not necessarily exactly how I'm doing it right now. I just want to demonstrate a few shortcuts here already. So as you can see, I have a stitch option here. And what that does is I'm selecting an edge and I hit the stitch shortcut and it will then just take those faces and project them perfectly onto this edge where we told it to stitch it to. So where can we find it? Customize user interface. Group, unwrap UVW. And let's have a look for stitch. I have it bound to shift and S. And when you use my keyboard configuration that this tutorial comes with, uh, obviously you will already have it. If not, I would recommend to put that here on a dedicated shortcut. Another shortcut that is pretty important is the this one here, select by element UV toggle. I have it on A. And here in the shortcut menu, it's called the TV element mode. What it's doing is that when we are also here in any of these modes, like let's say the polygon mode, and I drag a selection. So it's doing what we expect it to do here. It just selects the faces that we actually have our selection bracket over. But sometimes you wanna just quickly shuffle your geometry around here in that UV window and for that it's good to have a shortcut assigned to it, the TV element mode, in order for it to be able to quickly make a selection of everything. So let's also add that. And another shortcut that is pretty important is the, let's click, let's just make a edge loop for it here. The edge loop shortcut, which I have on C, is the TV loop select. So we wanna be quick when we select an edge loop like that. Therefore, I would also recommend put that here on a shortcut. And that goes hand in hand with the align shortcuts. Same as we already have them in our actual modeling workflow, we wanna be able to straighten edges, like for example, that one here. So after I made that loop, I'm gonna press X and it just did a weird job on it. Let's just do it again, X. And it will just align everything perfectly horizontal. So X is on a line horizontally to pivot. And the same applies to the vertical shortcut, which is on Y on my shortcut. On an English keyboard, however, it would be Z. Those letters are inverted on German keyboard. So these shortcuts enable us to be quick, make loops here, 
and be quick when we want to align geometry, which we want to be doing a lot. So one last thing that I almost forgot to mention is that under Tools and Stitch Selected, we want to make sure that our bias is set to zero. By default, it's set to 0 0.5, and we're gonna leave those boxes checked here. Those are just the best settings uh, for the kind of stitching results. Otherwise, we might get some strange scaling on it. So let's make sure we have that. And also under options, we wanna make sure we tell it to save current settings as default so that uh, 3D Max actually remembers what we just put here as settings. So let's grab everything again here. Let's flatten map it. And let's have a look here at the objects that we wanna unwrap individually. I wanna make sure that these elements here are all one unwrap. So I'm just gonna select them here. Let's go into X-ray mode and see if we haven't selected any faces here that we don't wanna add to it. Let's grab a few more down here. And those faces here as well. Okay, so basically everything here we now gonna quick planar. And uh, that is actually another shortcut now that I get to it um, that you wanna add. Let's go back to the group, unwrap UVW, and um, depending on where you want to have it, uh, I have it on uh, tilt key again under escape, quick planar map. And what it's doing is it looks at your face selection and it will just uh, project and unwrap um, based on the angle of all the UVs together and how it thinks it's laid out uh, in the best way here according to that. So this is how we can quickly lay out some geometry here, like this one. And the next thing that we're gonna do now is, since um, we have some stretching here now, we need to relax this. And the ironic thing is that the actual dedicated relax button here is doing a really poor job most of the time, as you can see it's doing this here, it overlaps some edges and some words. So let's just quick plane on it again. And let me introduce you to the peel mode. And peel mode is absolutely amazing. It's doing what the relax basically is supposed to do. So you can see this is a much nicer layout here already, just with one click. And we have almost no stretching down here. And um, before we get any further with this, let me just close the unwrap editor because it's never too late to still add some extra geometry. And I just saw that we have this thing here with too steep of an angle. So I'm just gonna give that thing here another flow connect. Now the only downside is that we also have to do that in the high poly again. Let me just quickly get to it. Let's just grab exactly the same loop here. And let me flow connect it. And there we go. All right, let's close the high poly again. And let's continue with our unwrap here. Close this. Let me get back into the unwrap mode. Select this piece again here. And now I notice I forgot some pieces here. So I'm gonna edit, quick planar, and I'm gonna drag it out here a little bit so that we have it more isolated. And peel mode to stretch it all out. Now one thing that I also wanna add about the peel mode is that you see how it adds these blue control points and it already adds them on some algorithm based how it thinks it's doing the best job to stretch stuff. 
So if we would take this control point here, we could just do stuff like this, but we can also add a control point like here, for instance, or let's put it here and we can kind of align our geometry a little bit. So that's what I want to do here. I want to make sure that this is all straight. Not perfectly straight, that won't be possible with just those control points, but we can already drag it in a certain direction that we want to then later just perfectly align it to. And also I'm going to pin it here. We, we don't want to try to make all this here horizontal. That, that won't work. But I do want to have it all horizontally aligned here until here because later when we have our wood texture here, you can already imagine uh, the wood has these uh, fibers that go in this direction, for instance. And it would look strange if it goes all the way till here and then all of a sudden it makes this curve here that would lead uh, to us to have some um, weird butterfly effect here. So in order to prevent that, I'm going to pin it here again at a control point. And I'm going to also add one here and bring the whole thing a little bit into that direction already as well as here. And now we can try to add a few more control points here like that and also around here. And that looks already pretty good to me. Let's bring this down a little bit and let's add one here. And let's bring this down a little bit. Let's add a few more here. So basically the, the number one important rule in unwrapping is to keep our edges as straight as possible. So I'm gonna add this extra control point here as well. And then we're gonna do, after we went out of the peel mode, we are going to make use of this loop shortcut that we have. And now I'm just going to align it perfectly horizontal. Maybe drag it up a little bit here. And the same thing here for uh, the vertical align. Just gonna do these edge loops and I'm going to straighten them. And if you wonder why that is so important, it's because we want to make sure that our normal map later has a perfect bake on these edges where it really matters. So we don't have some, some weird extra steps uh, and in order for that we need to keep it straight. So imagine it would be something like this. You can already see those steps here and nothing else will happen or nothing different than that would happen if we bake our normal map onto an unwrap that looks like this. So we want to keep it straight and that will ensure for the actual maps that we're going to bake out to be just as good as they can be. Have a quick look around here. And that looks pretty good to me here on that piece. Let's have a look at the other stuff. This piece here in the back, we can also give it a quick peel in order for it to be perfectly stretched out. Take this here and let's have a look around here at the other stuff. So this piece here obviously is also one. I'm gonna put that up here. Actually, it doesn't matter yet where we position our stuff because first we're just gonna puzzle it all. Uh, like we, We're going to unwrap it first, everything, and then later we're going to puzzle it all back together when we have all our objects combined. For now, we just wanna make sure we have it all already unwrapped. So this piece already came, on, came out perfect here with a flattened unwrap. And these pieces here, 
are a good example to demonstrate the stitch again. So we're gonna select this edge here and it's missing those three faces. So let me just uh, stitch it. It's also peel it. The peel then sometimes requires for us to grab those words again and straighten them out. But at least we know that it's perfectly stretched already. Let's have a look. The same thing down here. This here needs to be stitched back together. And I'm also gonna peel it. And already straighten it. And then what we can also do if we want, uh, we can already tell it to rescale the elements. Let's click that. And let's pay attention to how some of this will change in size. Not a whole lot, but a little bit. And that means that all the taxel information here is absolute one-to-one -one, so that we don't have any indifferences with our resolution here. Also, not the most important for this stage, but then later when we have all our objects here attached back together and we start the actual puzzling of our map, we then just gonna select everything again and we're gonna hit that button to make sure it all has the same uh, textile resolution. And that's basically the stock. So let's continue with the next piece here. So as the next thing to work on, I thought that we could already take all these screws and bolts, select them all, and already get that out of the way. So we have all this small stuff already taken care of. And for that, I'm just going to select everything here. Also on that side. Let's also take this piece here and that little piece as well as that. And now in isolation mode, we have all these objects here as 23 different objects. Uh, to be quicker with the unwrap, let's just collapse them. Collapse selected makes a mesh out of it. We don't want to be working in mesh mode, so let's convert it to editable poly. And now with the unwrap mode, we are going from one piece to the next and just unwrap it. But first let's apply, let's select everything here. Everything selected and flatten map it. And usually I like to then push it out of the way here and then select one object at a time. Select this one here and flatten map it. And it looks like I have uh, ignore back facing enabled, which is hidden here. And that just revealed that I didn't select the whole thing. It was just basing my selection on the angle. So we want to make sure that we have this here unchecked and then we are able to select really the whole object. So I'm just going to flatten map it again. And now we can actually unwrap it. So what we want to do with that thing here is to select all these front faces as well as these here. I'm going to quick planar it again. And now we can also make some use of the text tools for the first time. So let's just start it. And let's take this edge here and align it. This is one of the major features that I use text tools for. Um, Max also has align options here, but I always find it easier to just click that button here. It always looks at it, how far it's rotated and then either aligns it horizontally or vertically. And now I'm going to select everything again here. I'm going to peel it, which then again breaks this uh, perfect vertical alignment. And I'm going to make use of the shortcut we just set up. I'm going to straighten it again. So now that piece would already be unwrapped. And these pieces here are 
the ones that we see here in the, the middle, we want to keep them separate. And I'm also just going to align it. So as you can see, that makes it already perfectly straight. And let's continue with that thing here. Sometimes you can see it's doing these little stabs, which of course we don't want to have. In that case, there's another cool thing here, which is the straighten selection shortcut or button. So I'm just clicking it. And as you can see now, it's perfectly straight. So sometimes I'm just using this. The only problem is that it doesn't work very well when you have geometry that has triangles in it, like here. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Let's see what's happening here. Yeah, you see uh, it won't work here. So in that case, I'm just gonna undo that. And I'm stitching everything together here. We're looking at all these faces here on the side. And now I'm just gonna select all these words here on the right side. And I'm also going to vertically align them. Same as here. And now just a quick rescale element to give it all the same texture ratio. And that will be the first element here. Now here's the next, basically the same screw. I'm just gonna do the same thing now, flatten map, select everything here, quick planar, select those two together, also quick planar. And that already looked pretty well. However, peel, always necessary. And since this is already straight here in our viewport, we don't have to press the align button on it because it already brought them into our UV viewport perfectly straight. So let's just continue, same here. It's no need to align anything. And I'm going to rescale that as well. Okay, let's put that over here. So these two screws that we just unwrapped, if you remember what we did earlier, we copied them from here to there, or maybe the other way around. And then we continued to copy the same screw here and here and there, which means that all these five screws are actually the same. And the reason why I unwrap them individually, at least those two, is that I'm planning on copying them over here and there and there again once we got our normal map baked, which means that for now we don't have to actually unwrap that stuff here. We're just gonna select it and we're going out of our unwrap window here and then hit the polygon mode, which will bring back the selection that we just did while we were unwrapping. And now we can just detach this and also give that this material that we assign to objects that we plan to swap out later with stuff that we already unwrapped and that we want to share. So that means that we have two individual screws and we have then the liberty to have different kinds of um, details on it. Like let's say this has like a very individual characteristic scratch right there. It would look very strange if it has the same scratch right here. That's why I wanted to have at least two screws that are individually unwrapped and then we can just feel free to copy them over here and here and there. So let's also give them a different material, the same one that we applied to the other side of the stock to remember that these are elements here that we're going to copy back later once we have these elements actually unwrapped. We're gonna then just share it with this. And one thing that I wanna do here is to actually detach everything that's on the right side because it makes it easier to follow when we're unwrapping that here. So we're not getting lost with the stuff that's here in the background. So 
Let's go into isolation mode. Let's focus on everything here on the right side. And now what we can do is these individual bolt heads that we have multiple times here on the right side, we're just gonna make a selection for all of them. Over here. And then we can just quick planar them, all seven of them and peel mode and that is basically uh, unwrap for seven objects with just two clicks so that saves us some time for those elements here that have these extra faces around the side we still are required to unwrap them individually but we can also make a selection for all of them and just flatten map them and now it's a matter of stitching it back together. And this one here. And now let me just select this here. And let's also give it the peel mode. And that stretches it out perfectly fine. So this is basically taken care of. We can also drag that over here. And that leaves us with only that thing here. Let me put that over here, a bit more space so you see more what's going on in the viewport. And I'm just going to also flatten map that thing again here. bring up the text tools again and align it so this front face here is already nice and actually we won't be needing this element here at the back we won't ever be seeing that so I'm just selecting it get out of the unwrap mode back into the actual editable poly mode and then we can just delete it and jump back into the unwrap action So let's make a face selection here on this one and let's just quickly flatten map it again and then just stitch those back together. Let's have a look at this here. Let's also stitch that and let's try the straighten selection on that. So sometimes it's worth to just straighten it and then relax it again. And now we can then just uh, use our loop shortcut and give it uh, at least here on the sides, we wanna make sure it's straight. It's not really necessary to keep it straight here, um, but as long as we make sure that this, where our normal map is right at this edge, um, is straightened, uh, this is the kind of thing that we want to make sure we we have. So that only leaves us with this piece here, which is already unwrapped. We just got to straighten it here as well. And now we have the whole side here unwrapped and we're just gonna rescale elements. And now it all has the same text ratio as well. And we're just gonna drag it over here and then attend to the next side over here. And here it's more of the same. We're going to select these elements first that are all the same here. And I'm going to quick planar them and peel. Drag them over here. And now I'm just gonna do the same thing that we did also on the other side while being in face mode actually. Select everything and I'm going to flatten map it. Let's have a look at this thing here. It's already did a pretty good job here, the flatten mapping. And those blue edges here indicate that this is where this borders to, so we can already take care of stitching that that 
would be our first piece already unwrapped and now we're just gonna have to stitch back the rest of these things drag it over here let's uh, peel it again and let's have a look at this here what is that oh yeah this piece flatten map and actually I want to keep this face and this face and these bordering faces together so I'm gonna grow the selection here and I'm going to quick planar it again plus peel and that stretches it out perfectly again so let's drag it over here and then we only have this piece which already came out nicely through the flatten unwrap it's gonna stretch it out again and that's the left side done already so I'm just going to rescale the elements drag it over here and collapse that and let's continue with the next thing and I'm gonna continue with this piece here gonna select all these faces here and I'm growing the selection all the way till here and since this is basically a, a cylindrical unwrap that is kind of complicated in its shape with all these different curves I'm just gonna quick planar it as well and now I have to define where I want to have our seam. So I decide I want it to have here, I want it to have it here in the middle. And I'm gonna pick this piece down here, isolate it. Select all these faces here and let's grow the selection till here. And I'm gonna quick planar it as well and now I want to have our edge seam right here going through the middle so let's select one of these edges here let's press C so we have our edge loop and now we can right click it and break this here so now this is basically an open edge seam and back into face mode we can then straighten it out unfortunately the straighten doesn't really do the the best job possible because it's it's not as good as it could be so I'm just gonna relax it some more or actually I'm gonna gonna peel it let's get out of it and now we can just uh, select these loops here and straighten them and again I only care here for those sides I don't really care for this like we can leave this a little stretch this might actually be more to what the actual geometry looks like here and all that we care for is is really here so let's leave it like this and that leaves us with this piece here on top let's just select those faces here first let me flatten map it and that already came out perfect actually so I'm just gonna leave it like this gonna take those guys and I'm also gonna flatten map it and we can leave those pieces here that's pretty much okay as it is so I'm gonna take this here and the rest is just a matter of stitching it back together actually not this piece here so this is all one piece and let's see where this is coming from this is coming here from the back and I want to delete that because again we will never see it it's actually stuck here in the geometry so I'm just gonna delete that and that would be this piece unwrapped already so next let's focus on that piece here so I'm gonna select everything Control A flatten map and that already did a pretty good job here 
So we can take this piece, drag it over here. And let's see for the other stuff. That came out pretty okay. And also this here. She let me have a quick look at that. Do we even need that? And no, we don't. We will actually never see that. So I'm gonna delete those faces as well. Let's jump back. Straighten that here. And let's stitch it. And same for this piece. And I don't like it that it does this L thing. So I'm just gonna break it here and I'm gonna put it all onto the horizontal axis. And also I'm gonna straighten it here along the edges. And what do we have here? Let us rotate that. like this and I want to keep this edge here on top straight that's the one that I consider the most important so I'm going to align this and the same here I'm gonna align that but I'm also gonna rotate it let's have a look at this pieces here Let's straighten that selection and that's pretty good already. So I'm going to just rescale it and I will push it somewhere around here and continue with the next piece, which would be that one. And let's have a quick look at it. I already know that we won't ever be seeing this face here in the back. So I'm also just going to delete it. And the rest should be really straightforward. Just flatten map it again. And pretty much we can we can leave it as it is. There's really nothing else we can do. The flatten mapping basically took care of it already. Only thing could be this piece here that we want to also straighten. So other than that, Flatten mapping already unwrapped it perfectly. And let's continue with a receiver. So one thing I want to do on this piece here, the upper receiver, is to detach the outer shell from the inner shell. And the way to do that on, a, on an object like that, that's already welded together, is to go here in the middle segment, select one edge, and then just with a ring loop, convert it to a face selection, we have all inner segments um, or middle segments at the same time, which we then can uh, detach. And then while being in the element mode, we can also switch between the outer and the inner shell and also detach them for convenience. And let's go in isolation mode here. And another thing before we actually unwrap is that I just see that these edges, we won't really need them. So I'm just gonna get rid of them here, as well as target well this word over here. And one thing that I wanna do for this receiver here as well is to unwrap these pieces here individually. So let's make 
a selection. Let's just drag our face bracket selection around here and deselect everything that's bordering to it so that we only have these things selected. And then I'm gonna quick planar it. Let's relax it a bit. And sometimes the relax works good in combination with the peel mode, like here. So now it's just a matter of aligning it. And let's make those sides here straight. Don't want to have this edge. Okay, that looks fine. Let's do the same over here. Quick planar and relax. And also the peel mode as well as aligning it. And that came out a little strange here, so I'm just going to drag these words individually. And now back to these side edges, which we want to have aligned. That looks pretty good. And this one here. Just a matter of also straightening the edges here on the sides. And that would be those vertical pieces. Let's focus on these ones here next. I'm just going to select them all at the moment. And I'm going to also quick planar it. It's just uh, rotated here. It already points in the right direction. And in that case, I'm already pretty happy what the quick planar mapping did. So I'm not going to bother to actually straighten it because that will break some of the pretty good edge flow that we have going here. I can demonstrate it to you. If I'm uh, stretching that here or relaxing it, it's uh, kind of breaking this perfect line. So I'm going to leave it like we just had it here with the quick planer alone and all I'm going to do is I align it. Let's also individually align the, the sides again. Sometimes you'll notice that you press the align button and it will do some weird jump. So in that case you just have to undo it and do it again. I would say it's another bug that 3 Max comes with, like right here. Like there's no reason why I just did that jump. So I'm going to undo that, going to align it again. It's just one of these things. So that would be all these pieces already, which is uh, good to have. Let's just uh, rescale them. And let's focus on the rest. So for the rest, we can, with this selection active, just press Ctrl I and that makes an inverted selection of everything else and actually now that I see it we also still have these pieces here so I'm gonna select these 
front faces. I'm going to grow the selection over here. I'm also going to quick planar map it. And I'm going to take this piece and I'm going to peel it as well, stretch it out. and straighten the edges. Maybe I can do it like this. See a bit more here. Oops. Okay, that looks good. Do the same over here. And now we have all these sticking out pieces unwrapped and we can now control I and unwrap the rest of our receiver. And the first thing I'm gonna do here is to also flatten map it. And one thing that I wanna do as well is to have this whole element here in the back together with these two bordering face segments laid out as one UV island later. So a quick way to do that is to drag a selection around this here and just deselect all the faces that we already know we don't wanna have. And that leaves us now with only this element that we know for sure we want to keep. So I'm going to quick planar it and it's almost done. Just going to also give it the peel mode. And now it's pretty much perfect. So just a matter of also straightening it here. And also straighten it here. That's where we also want to make sure our normal map comes on nicely later. And other than that, that piece is also completed already. And that leaves us with the rest. Stitching action here for the rest of the receiver. So you can see all these are individual bits here and we're just gonna stitch them all back together now. And also I'm gonna straighten that here. Doesn't always have to be the edge mode. We can also be in the vert mode to do that. Because the normal map can be really unforgiving when you don't have straight edges where it matters. And we just wanna make sure it's perfect later on. So that would be the receiver. As you can see, we have different cutout shapes here. So we can't just mirror this side over to that side. That's why we need to have this whole piece here as one unique unwrap. Let's have a quick look where this thing comes from. Okay, let's just add it. I'm just gonna stitch it here. And now with target weld, I'm gonna bring this piece down here. And that concludes the receiver unwrap. Quick look again at this thing here. Since I was just talking about straightening edges, let's make sure we at least straighten these ones here since obviously we can't straighten those here. Too much of a curve there, but this thing here we can make sure we keep straight. And let's continue with the rest of the receiver. And it's time to take care of the inner part as well as this segment here in the, in the middle of it. So um, I selected both of them and I'm just gonna 
at the UV editor on top. Going into this um, select by element mode, I'm just gonna grab all these faces here, these inner segments, and I am going to flatten map them. And I'm not sure if I like this result, so let's try something else. Let's also quick planar that. Let's rotate it. And let's just break it somewhere. It doesn't really matter where. Usually somewhere here in those edges. And now let's try with the straighten selection. And that makes one really long line of uh, faces, but that's okay. Like this is this is okay for this kind of geometry that we will barely ever see. It may not be the most perfect unwrap, but it's good enough. Anyway, we can try to relax it here. As you can see, it's not really helping us much. And also with a peel mode, actually the peel mode seem to have worked quite fine on it. So let's, let's keep it like this. This looks actually better than before. That ensures that again it's stretched out in a nice way. And that leaves us with this piece here in the inside. And I'm also gonna just uh, select it all. And I'm going to quick planar it like that. And I want to separate this stuff here from the rest. So I'm trying that while I'm being here in that mode. Let's select all these faces here and deselect the faces around it. And that leaves us with exactly that here again. And now with quick planar, it's already looking pretty decent. Let's just give it also the peel. And as for this piece here, let's give it the quick planar again and also the, the peel. And that didn't really look too good. Let's see what we can do about that. Where is the problem with that? Let's try the flatten mapping. And that seems to be working okay. So I'm gonna just grab that edge here and I'm going to stitch it, to put it over here to see more. And what do we have here? This is, uh, this is this geometry there. So I'm also gonna go back into the edge mode, go to this edge and now I'm gonna target weld by the way, it's, it's here for the case you've been wondering. I also have a shortcut assigned to it. I have it on Control and T. And I'm just gonna target weld these words back together. One thing to be aware of is that this piece here in the inside that we just unwrapped, it's not really ever visible much. So later on we're just gonna scale it down uh, quite significantly on our actual texture. So we don't have to really worry too much about this. And let's see where this face comes from. That looks like uh, some interesting stuff here. So that seems to be all that which we forgot to unwrap or I did. So I'm gonna quick planar it again and do the same thing that we just did with the other piece. Select one of these edges here. Maybe, now let's keep it up there, it's okay. Let's put it, let's put it here actually. Let's break it and also straighten in combination with a peel mode. And that didn't work as well as just leaving it like it was. I'm gonna revert that. Let's 
try with the relax. Sometimes it's really a matter of just trying what works best, especially with unwrapping. So I just relaxed it and now I'm just gonna individually straighten that stuff here, align it. Because this is a piece that we may actually be seeing from first person, so we wanna make sure we have this one here all nice and straight. And that basically concludes the receiver. Now all that we have to do is remember to attach it back together. So I'm gonna take the upper receiver part and attach these pieces back together as well as select everything and weld it with a threshold of 0.01. And now we have one element again. And I'm going to grab that receiver here at the bottom next and I'm going to get rid of this edge loop that we only had there for the symmetry modifier. I'm gonna get rid of it. I'm going to select everything here and flatten map it. And let me go here into the the front perspective and make a face selection on everything here on the top. Minus these faces here, which we don't want. And I'm going to quick planar it as well as align it. And I'm going to drag out these edges here a slight amount. In some cases it's better to do it like that than using the, the peel mode or the relax. So that would be this piece here which we already have done. And let's do the same thing here for the, the bottom piece. Just grab this, put it over here and I'm going to stitch some things back together here and now I can just grab this which I want to have as an individual laid out piece and I'm going to detach it and that means that all these faces here on the side like both this and that will be individual bakes because we have text here on that side, or actually it was that side here, but we don't have it on that. That means we need to have it as individual laid out UV islands. And let's take those things here. I'm gonna grab this face and that face, and I'm going to grow the selection. I'm gonna quick planar it, and let's use the peel on it. As well as aligning it and also I'm gonna align it here and let me have a quick look around it looks like we have to flip this element here vertically and horizontally so now the text actually looks readable Let's also have a look at it here in the left autographic view. And that reveals that we could also align our stuff here so that it's straight. So that would be those pieces here. Let's drag them over here. And let's see what the rest is all about. This piece here, we already have that. And that piece is the bottom, no, the top piece, the cap. And I also want to unwrap that here. It's just, uh, no, quick planar, and let's just 
align it like that we will barely ever see that piece so it's not super important looks okay and looks like we have some more stitching to do here which is um, this stuff here and let's also straighten that And let me also grab all these four faces here and also just apply that. For simple stuff like that, it works fine. Let's rescale it. And that's basically this receiver part done as well here. Also kind of irritates me. Let me also already rescale that. It just looks nicer. And next I want to be working here on our pistol grip, which is a prime example of something that can just be split in half and mirrored. So one thing I just noticed is we still have this floater object here, which we don't need. So I'm going to get rid of it. And I'm going to detach everything here on that side, minus this piece here at the bottom. I want to basically detach all that. The reason for that is that this piece here at the bottom has this uh, high poly screw and I just want to make sure it comes on nicely without any butterfly effect. But this part here we can just assign our material to so that we remember what to mirror back later. Let's isolate this and let's just start by selecting these bottom faces here. Let's already give them an unwrap. Let's straighten it. And let's deselect that stuff here. Everything else we're gonna unwrap as one piece. So I'm gonna also quick planar and peel it. And that looks already pretty nice. So basically we can just leave it like this. And where did that stuff go? I am not sure. Let's just unwrap it again. Let's flatten map it. And now I'm kind of worried that this didn't came out right. Let's just peel mode it again. Okay, that seems to be fine. And this here is as good as it can be as well. So in that case, I'm just gonna rescale elements. And that would be this pistol stock. Next, I'm going to be working here on the trigger. Let's isolate it. Let's flatten map it. And these pieces here on the sides, they look like they already came out nice. So I'm going to drag it over here. And now I just want to be making a selection for these inner faces here. I'm going to grow this selection. so that we can take all these front faces here and unwrap it as one. So also peel it. As well as straightening those edges out. And let's just take it more over here. Looks better like that. 
Same here on that side. Let's stitch some things back together. And those would be all these faces here. Let's just um, put that over here. This piece seems to be fine as well. So I'm just gonna drag it over here. And that would be those front faces that I'm just gonna quick planar, as well as peel. And that would be the trigger already. Maybe we can just delete this top face, which we don't need. Next, I'm gonna be working here on the trigger guard. And you may remember that we built this piece here with some different geometry on top or different elements. So I'm just gonna detach it, isolate that, and I'm gonna delete these faces because we only created that earlier for the high poly model. And let me just weld everything back together here, 0 0.01. And that saves us some polys that otherwise we would have wasted. Let's also get rid of these edges here. As well as these edges. And also here, this edge loop in the middle was only for the sake of using the symmetry modifier on it while we were working on it. So I'm just gonna delete those edges here as well. And back into our UVW editor, flatten map. Let's uh, do some stitching here. as well as up here. And let me also peel it. And I would like to mention one thing here at this point. So you may ask yourself, what is the deciding factor to unwrap our geometry in the way that we unwrap it? Um, why do we unwrap all this here as one piece? And also we could uh, stitch this here together as well as this. Um, let's have a look at it. So this here is a perfectly fine unwrap um, for this UV island. And why don't we add this here, like for instance, like why don't we do this and have this as one UV island? Um, the answer for that is that we just detach that here again, is that we are always having a look at our curves here. So since this is perfectly curved all the way around and also here, that means that we can just have it as one continuous uh, unwrap laid out here. Also here also makes a curve. If however that would be a 90 degree angle, um, it would break our smoothing group. and everything that we're unwrapping here, that we're laying out here, will be one individual smoothing group later. That's uh, something that text tools uh, will do for us. We're gonna get to that later. For now, we just wanna make sure that we only unwrap where it's reasonable in terms of looking at these curves and trying to avoid uh, some really, like more than, I don't know, 60 degree angles or something like that. We just wanna not add those to our UV islands. And next I'm going to unwrap these faces here. And geometry like that is usually annoying to unwrap. So I'm just going to do it on one side and then we can also just copy it over to this side later. For now, let's focus here on that side. Let me straighten this selection here. 
And unfortunately, even though it looks okay, it actually did a pretty poor job on it. The straighten tool doesn't really work very well for geometry like that. So as you can see, it, we have some stretching here that is absolutely out of proportion. And one thing that we can do is just select everything here and peel mode won't work. It will just bring it back to its original shape. So instead, I'm gonna take it like this here and I'm going to relax it. And I know that looks horrible. However, now we can just individually take these edges and align them. And that leaves us with the best uh, possible unwrap for these whole faces. We just continue to straighten it here. Next, I'm going to be working on these faces here. And I'm going to select them all the way up to here. I want to have all this as one smoothing group. So I'm going to quick planar it, which already seems to be doing a pretty good job on it. So all that I want to make sure is that this here, let's just rotate it in that way. This here is actually completely straight. That makes it easier for us to lay it out on our texture and we don't have to deal with some normal map that has to go around a curve. Again, if we keep it straight, that's the best thing that we can do basically. So I'm gonna already put this here and now we have to straighten this edge and we have to also straighten these edges down here as well as this one and now I'm just dragging that one out here grab that vert and make it so that it can be stitched together here. Now I understand that this comes with a price of a little bit of distortion here however it's not as bad as having this curve going around there. Let's just pull that up a little bit more. And let's also straighten these faces. This did uh, again a pretty poor job to straighten one, so I'm gonna just take it, relax it and manually straighten it. And that leaves us with this piece all set up. These pieces here, I want to leave them as individual faces so that this all gets an individual smoothing group because otherwise I'm worrying that the smoothing group will look strange on it and also the normal map bake then. So I'm gonna keep it like that. Let's continue here with some stitching. Let's just drag all the geometry that we already unwrapped out of the way so we don't get confused. So we have all that here. And let's just take these faces here. Let's also get them out of the way. And let's continue with that that part here, I'm going to also stitch that. As well as making it straight. So same thing, straighten. Let's relax. And align. Oops. Let's take this element here that belongs together with it. Let's just align it here. And I'm going to break it here and straighten it also. As 
well as here. Stitch that back together as well as that piece. And same here, I'm gonna break it and I'm gonna drag this vert over here. Straighten that. And that leaves us with some really nice straight geometry here. Let's attend to this thing. See where we got it over here. And again, I'm going to straighten it. Relax and same as before, I'm just gonna straighten it out. Let's have a look again. Oh yeah, this piece that we just unwrapped. Take it down here. And that leaves us with not too much. Let's just stitch this back together here. Oh yeah, there's this piece here in the inside, which we can also stitch. As well as the faces that we have here. Let's also stitch it here. And let me just grab all that stuff here and I'm going to break it and I'm going to peel it to stretch it out and just stitch that back together. And we can also attach this here. So I'm going to go back here and stitch it. Same as here. And quick look to see what's left. Select all the missing elements. Let's get the easy ones out of the way. And let me just also straighten this one here. Stitch that as well as aligning it. Oops. We break it here and I'm going to straighten it and relax. And these bits here are identical to what we unwrapped here on the other side, besides that piece, I forgot that. So all that stuff here, I'm just going to make a selection for it and I'm going to detach it and I'm also giving it the material that remembers us to later just copy it over from what we unwrapped here. For now, let's jump back into it, let's just uh, rescale it and that would be the trigger guard unwrapped. 
and it seems like we spend more time on that damn thing than on the actual receiver which can be really annoying sometimes these small pieces with complicated geometry are just really annoying to unwrap but that's just the way it is with the unwrapping in general so let's continue with the next annoying piece uh, which would be the safety switch and actually let's just leave it here for this video so we were making some good progress here we unwrapped the stock and the receiver the upper receiver the pistol stock here and the trigger guard so it's already quite a bit of progress and we are then going to continue it in the next part of this unwrapping tutorial and I hope it wasn't too overwhelming the kind of stuff I mean usually it's very repetitive uh, the kind of actions it's just important to kind of get the main idea what what it is that you need to pay attention to and that's really all about unwrapping our UV islands where our curves are making sure to avoid uh, harsh uh, angles like this one here as well as keeping our stuff straight and maybe you wonder like okay why why would I want to have it like this with this distortion well it's I guess it's also a matter of a personal taste uh, in my opinion it's just nicer to have a normal map that is perfectly laid out here on a horizontal edge uh, other than having the normal map going around here so that's why I rather have some distortion going on here than having these little steps when the normal map would have to go around here so that's just the kind of stuff that um, I do on objects like that here where really all we have on is metal of course if there would be like some text here then I wouldn't be doing it like this because then obviously the distortion would be quite noticeable but other than that I'm keeping my faces as straight as I can and uh, that's basically the number one rule that I would say is of great importance for the unwrapping anyways enough talk for now I'll open a beer here and I'll be seeing you in the next part of this unwrapping tutorial. Cheers and post.